GB28, roll eight, scene two, take two. I'm Kat Wisniewski and I specialize in making glass and rubber chainmail jewelry. I grew up in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago. Born and raised. I consider myself a very artistic person, also very complicated or complex person. I like to be very organized. I like to make sure that I have things just so, and I do have to say it. I do like to have my way. I can say that I've been crafty for pretty much as long as I can remember. I got makeup at a young age. Um, I've done a lot of playing with sand, sand art. I've done mosaics, beading, and I just kind of went from there into jewelry making specifically. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from fashion magazines. I get a lot of inspiration from artistic people such as dancers. I mean, I, I think industrial type factory type imagery really is inspiring to me. I saw a young lady at a craft fair who had a bracelet that I just couldn't take my eyes off of. And I asked her what it was. She said it was called chainmail. I went back home, looked on the internet. I found a bunch of pictures of chainmail jewelry and I printed them out really, really large and then decided, how am I going to make this thing that's in front of me? And what do I need? Went to the craft store, bought the worst supplies that you could ever imagine and put them on the picture until they lined up in the way that I thought they matched what I saw in the picture. And that's how I started making chainmail jewelry. So getting started in chainmail, I feel is pretty easy because you need very few materials to get started. It's rings interconnected to other rings and there's different patterns. And you can create it with just two pliers and a few jump rings and that's all you need. It's very simple. It does involve some math, and but I, what I like about it is that it's very linear and it's very organized and it makes sense. That's what I love about chainmail. Before I started selling, I believe that the point where I really felt that I could make money at this craft, um, specifically chainmail, is when I noticed that when I would wear something, anyone around me would react. Did you make that? Hey, I would love to have one of those. My daughter would love that. And so when I kept hearing it over and over, week after week, I'm like, I should just charge money for these things. And I just really pushed myself to start charging for the things that I was making. I really had to sit down and decide how much time was I spending and what would, what would I need to basically make a profit off of what I was making. In the beginning, I certainly wasn't making a profit. It took me a little while to really understand what making a profit meant. The journey that I took from being unprofitable to definitely profitable was when I really learned what the craft fair market was like. I think that somebody who is interested in a craft and they want to um, maybe push themselves towards making money has to take uh, a, give themselves quite a bit of a push. And definitely somebody who wants to do it as a business, they have to push themselves. They have to make it at least a part-time career. They need business cards, they need a website, and they need to wear their products. Learning, you know, what your brand should look like, what your colors should look like so that you're identifiable to other people on a repetitive basis. What am I offering that's different from another artist? People who may live in more remote areas where they want to do the craft, but they're not finding enough customers, they're not finding the right customer, that's where your website comes in, right? You need a great website, you need a great presentation, you need great photos. Photography always trips me up because I learned, you know, I'm making, using the little box and everything like that, and it, it was the worst way to shoot my items because I just could never get what I wanted to get. So if I were gonna teach somebody about anything like that, Hey, you can buy a softbox for really inexpensive. Hey, you can make your own diffusion frame. Hey, you can do this and then just get a halfway decent camera or your iPhone and boom, you're set. 
all of those things I learned on my own and I did it on my own. You can learn those things, that's what YouTube is for, and you can definitely put yourself out there and market yourself towards those customers. You have to educate yourself on all the different variables within that new thing that you're interested in. Hours and hours of website searching, hours and hours of making things and trying things and undoing things and breaking things and throwing things. And that's really the only way to get yourself to the next level. My favorite part about Chainmail in general and basically where I am now in my life in terms of my craft is teaching. Um, I like being that person who can separate it all out and make it make sense to somebody else. And then over the years, I've specialized in writing tutorials. I have published a book. It's called New Connections in Chainmail Jewelry and it was published in 2016 and it really focuses on what my specialty is, which is working with glass rings and rubber rings and incorporating them into chainmail. Not too many people are doing that right now, so I feel like I'm at the verge of creating something new and interesting and a new way to look at chainmail that people may not have considered before.